Welcome all of you risk takers and truth seekers to podcast Life the Battlefield. Today we're going to talk about misinformation and disinformation. We all love to talk about misinformation, disinformation, particularly the last couple of years. And there is so many so-called experts in public life and professionals and, you know, teenagers. Everybody has their own definition of misinformation and disinformation. Well, I like to dig deeper into this topic. I like to go back in the past, in the history, where we can grasp how the misinformation transferred and translated in disinformation cost somebody head. Empire, entire empire was lost based on misinformation. Today, we're going to talk about Maria Antoinette, beyond the guillotine and misquoted cake. French, they say, Quil manger de la brioche, or let them eat cake. Did Marie Antoinette say this or not? Let's go discover together. She was married at the age 14, and she was 19 when her and her husband Louis XVI ascend to the French throne. She was worshipped and challenged, dragged to the mud and elevated to the heavens, lived in a palace and died on the guillotine. This is the story of Marie Antoinette, France's final ruler an egoistical waste of time, and, as I say, the victim of disinformation and misinformation. My name is Mario Beckes. I'm the Guinness World Record holder as well. My background is human intelligence, espionage in diplomatic environment, in military environment, and as well in corporate and private sector. I published several books on the topic of investigation and human interrogation. And today, we're going to do the sectomy. How the misinformation and disinformation cost the head one of the royals, the rulers of the France, and end up the entire empire. That name is Marie Antoinette. So let's go deeper into her life. Marie Antoinette was born in Vienna on November 2nd, 1755 as the 15th child and 11th daughter of Empress Maria Theresa. She was very busy. And Holy Roman Emperor Franz I Stephen. A court official described Antoinette as a small but perfectly healthy archduchess. Her sisters married in royal courts around Europe. And of course, in those times, to preserve the Austrian-French alliance, they proposed to King Louis XV of France that his grandson, marry one of Maria Theresa's daughters, which is a number of them. The older sisters, Joanna Gabriel and Maria Joseph, were scheduled to marry first, but they died of smallpox. So it was Maria Antoinette's turn. Following lengthy negotiations, the French king declared Maria Antoinette to marry his grandson in 1769. When the marriage contract was finalized, Maria Theresa learned that her daughter was unfamiliar with the French culture or language. Surprise, surprise. As a result, a huge number of tutors were assigned to prepare Maria Antoinette for her future as a queen of France. That was a, her future role. As you know, she was one of them. Maria Antoinette headed out for France with entourage and 14 carriages. At the French-German border, she was asked to hand over all of her belongings, including clothing, servants, and friends, as a symbolic act of reunification of her Austrian identity. Yeah, no reunification, renunciation. That was better word. After many negotiations, she was granted permission to keep the door, of course. They dressed her in a French costume and took her to Strasbourg, where she was honored in a grand ceremony. They left for Versailles after a few days. At Versailles, King Louis XV of France and other members of the royal family greeted Maria. Marie, Louis XVI, a shy young man, was to become her future husband and the heir to the French kingdom. He was a her senior by one year. So he was older for one year than Marie Antoinette. But can you imagine those days? Sometimes we can see in cultures today when the mother's deciding who the son is going to marry. But in those times, there was no TikTok, there was no Facebook, there was no many gadgets and social media platforms so you can spy with your little eye who is going to be your future wife or husband. In those days, well, everybody wants to the best. So obviously, Maria Antoinette, she was the best for Louis 
16, who was a shy young man. A spectacular wedding with a thousand guests was held in legendary Gallery of Mirrors, even today exists at Versailles. Marie Antoinette was given a large diamond collection before to her marriage. Oh, that's a good present. The newlyweds were then led to the matrimonial bed, which had been blessed by the Archbishop of Reims. The young couple marriage, however, was not consummated that evening or for many years afterwards. Can you guess? For seven years, the marriage was not consummated. It's not consumed. It's such a war. So for seven years, these royals didn't have that intimacy whatsoever. The bed was being blessed by the archbishop. The people were watching, waiting for the news that she is pregnant, obviously. However, the couple's most crucial task after marriage was to be bear and heir to the kingdom. That was everybody expected. During the early years of her reign, Marie Antoinette was mostly despised and blamed for this. Specifically, the couple didn't marry even seven years after the wedding for which Maria was fully responsible. When we put things into perspective, it's not so strange. When Maria Antoinette arrived at French court, she was just 15 years old and Louise was 16. They are both still in their 20s when they were tasked with reconciling the world's two superpowers. On those terms, yes, superpowers in those times. Madame de Barry, King Louis XV mistress, was also hostile to Louise XVI the young heir to the throne. The body was Kutesan, who rose to the ranks to become a lady of nobility. The body tried several plots and intrigues to turn King Louis XV against Maria Antoinette. But after the king's death, she was exiled from the court. You know what the Caesar said, I love treason, but I hate traitors. That's what's happened. What did you expect, Maria Antoinette? She's becoming the queen. Now, Marie Antoinette's daily life was not extremely interesting. Can you imagine? Every morning, the maids helped her get out of bed and dress it. She was depressed and missing the Austrian court, which was her home. Of course, when Marie Antoinette initially arrived at the French court, her origins were mocked, and she was usually viewed as a simpleton. Versailles was not a court where absurd customs and rumors were utilized to distract inhabitants from the real difficulties. To fit in, Mariana Antoinette began to spend an increasing amount of time selecting fabrics for her gorgeous gowns, styling her signature hairstyle, and gambling. Allegedly, she has a very, very tall hair. New problems arose just when the other countries began to accept her for it. She was uninterested in politics, which was irritated the Austrian court because she was meant to increase Austrian influence at the French court, but she did nothing. For those who don't know, the reason why was this marriage is happening there in those times between the, all these superpowers on a European continent, because nobody wants to have the wars anymore, you know. There was a, hundreds and hundreds of these wars in the past, in history, where the countries are slaughtering each other for the few kilometers of the land. And now, the only way how they can secure, actually, they will not be attacked each other, is by marriage. And uh, Marie Antoinette, she wasn't interested in politics whatsoever, which, of course, infuriated her Austrian family. After King Louis XV died, Louis Auguste was crowned King of France, and Marie Antoinette subsequently succeeded him as a Queen of France. At the time of coronation, bread was in short supply in Paris. Very short supply. The credit to Marie Antoinette line, if they have no bread, let eat them cakes. Well, I'll not read this on French, but it says, Seals on plus de pain qu'il mangenta de la brioche is misquoted, misquoted in this context. And that's where the things start to become very sour for Marie Antoinette and her husband, the King of France. Because that's a urban myth that that's what she said. However, obviously, somebody started rumors. And there's nothing worse when the mob and the people of France had nothing to eat. It's a very bad situation, and she's living a lavish lifestyle, and she told people to eat cake. Now, let's go a little bit, step back. She quoted brioche. Brioche is a big, sweet bread, you know. I doubt that she said eat a brioche, but even the, she said the cake. However, when she learned of the bread shortage, she observed it, is, and she says, it is certain that the people treated us well in spite of their own misfortune. 
We must work harder than even before to assure the happiness. That's her words. But somebody said, Marie Antoinette, she said, eat the cake. They were greeted warmly by the crowd and the young queen was magnificently dressed. It was revealed after coronation that she had little political influence over her husband. That is not true. While Louise squandered money on futile wars, all eyes were on Maria Antoinette and her creations, as well as her gambling. Somebody needs to pay. When she became queen, she began to cry because she was worried about why she didn't have children. Maria Antoinette disliked being bored. Thus, the topics of discussion in her circle had to be far from worldly or intellectual in nature. Serious discussions were not permitted in that circle and the other courtiers felt cut off from the queen restricted company. She quickly began disguising herself and attending Parisian opera balls. This is how she said to pay her secret boyfriend's visit. Of course, she was cheating on her husband. She was bored. She started spending a lot of more money because she didn't know how much it was worth. She mostly spent her money on clothes, diamonds and games. Things began to calm down when Marie Antoinette became pregnant for the first time. Many people were disappointed when Maria gave birth to the girl, Maria Teresa Charlotte, seven years after the wedding. Louis, who had a health condition that made sex difficult for him, was the reason the couple didn't not marry for years. They didn't marry, they didn't enjoy the sex, they didn't have intimacy. Of course, Antoinette bore the brunt of the blame at the moment, with claims flying around Paris that she was in relation with several other men and so an interest in Louise and later that her children were not Louise either. As you can see right now, this is where the things becoming very, very, very difficult for everybody, for the citizens of France and of course for the royal court. Marie Antoinette most probably cheated on her husband and uh, rumor says that Louis XVI, her husband was uh, schizophrenic and he couldn't have a sex and list goes on. However, in those times, even today, the royals love to hide things. Now, did she have uh, sex with somebody else? Most probably she did. In those times, that was acceptable. The point is very simple. The rumors are started with misinformation. And you must understand, misinformation, it is nothing else that her say. Everybody can say something may be true, may not be true. I do remember when I was in military for 14 years, I was listening every month, some rumor will come and say, salary is going to increase, the, the better conditions going to, new weapons going to come, you know. Every month was something new for 14 years and nothing changed. That was the misinformation. Somebody started the rumors. However, in those times, on one side, you have the royals who are hearing what they're speaking about them, they can't do nothing. But on another hand, you have the mob angry mob there's no money there's no food the wars are going her husband was waging the wars money was spent on the wars and um, of course it's a flammable situation it's gonna explode according to the royal customs the newborn was referred to as madame royale the appellation given to eldest daughter of french kings because a son belongs to the state and the daughter belongs to her to mother. Maria Antoinette was especially fond of her daughter. After Madame Royale, three more children were born, a daughter named Sophia Beatrice and two sons, Louis Joseph and the heir to the throne and Louis Charles, Duke of Normandy, better known as the Louis XVII. Maria Antoinette luxury dwindled as she aged. She got involved in so-called philanthropic work and dedicated her life to assisting children. After she hit 30, she stopped buying valuable stones and began dressing more conservatively and modestly. She matured into the more measured and modest individual. However, the misinformation became disinformation and there was a revolution brewing in the background. The royal family suffered two major personal setbacks. Sophie Beatrice, the royal couple's youngest daughter, died before turning one years old. And soon after, Crown Prince Louis Joseph, the eldest son, had a fatal case of tuberculosis and died. The French government was severely in debt at that stage as a result of costly wars and efficient taxation. The monarch convened a gathering of noble people to discuss the problem and potential solutions. 
However, the nobility were unable to come up with a solution. The king then called an assembly of the estates in May 1789. Does the year become familiar? The Assembly of Estates was the primary organization presented the French people. The ultra monarchist elites of Versailles feared the Assembly of the Estates. On July 11, 1789, the Queen and the King brother, Count d'Ortois, persuaded the King to sack the former minister and reorganize the administration because they feared the reformers in the Assembly of Estates were plotting the monarchy demise. A new Prime Minister, called Baron de Bretal, became close to the Queen. The Baron de Bretal was royalist and devoted Catholic. Many Parisians openly revolted, fearing that this was the beginning of the King's takeover. Some army members supported the crowd, while others did not. And then it comes July 14. July 14 is better known as a Bastille Day. And why this day? is important. On that day, a large crowd marched towards Paris Bastille Jail, a symbol of regal power. They gained control of the prison on July 14, 1789. They lynched two members of parliament who support the king and the prison warden. That was the beginning of the French Revolution. The royal court was in disarray and many courtiers fled. However, Louis XVI chose to remain at Versailles. On October 5th, 1789, Paris was notified that Monarch was stockpiling all of the grain and the hungry and agitated throng descend on the Versailles. During a brief meeting, the Queen begged the King once more to leave Versailles. The King declined once more. He says, no, I will not leave. The mob slaughtered the King's guard, which was made up to Swiss mercenaries after breaking into a palace in the early hours of the morning when the mob attacked the Queen's quarters. A large crowd got in a castle courtyard demanded that the Queen emerge onto the balcony. Of course, she arrived in a nightgown with the two children. The Queen, no King, the Queen. The Queen stood alone on the balcony in front of the crowd for 10 minutes. She then bowed and returned. The crowd screamed, Long live the Queen! Long live the Queen! After being moved by the Queen's bravery. As well known, Constitutional Assembly members secretly met Maria Antoinette in an attempt to restore full royal authority. But the talks failed. With the decision to revoke the privileges of the Catholic Church in 1790, any hope of compromise between the king and the revolutionaries vanished. By 1791, both the monarch and queen had concluded that the republic would ruin France. They decided to flee to Montpellier, a royalist bastion in eastern France, where they planned to rally supporters. However, the king was taken a prisoner at Varennes. The local rebels returned to the king to Paris in Castel. This exemplified the monarch's and royal family resistance to the republic. Following that, that's where the story becomes very interesting. Marie Antoinette attempted to preserve the monarchy by secretly negotiating with the head of legislative group of constitutional monarchists. The monarchy was declared illegal by the National Convention on September 21st, 1792, after Republicans had held the king on August 13, 1792. The royal family was then transported to the stronghold to prevent the king from being liberated later. Following that, violence erupted in Paris. On December 11, 1792, King Louis XVI was judged guilty of treason and subsequently sentenced to death on January 17, 1793. On January 21, 1793, he was executed by guillotine. Marie Antoinette would never seem to recover from the, her husband's death, King's death. When the guards roused Marie Antoinette up to 2 a.m. on August 2, 1793, she refused to get dressed. Her daughter was taken away from her and she was brought to the concierge prison. Widow Capet was her guida name. So give her name Widow Capet. From so on, she was known as Antoinette Capet, or prisoner number 280, rather than Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette was placed under intensive monitoring after her failed escape. The trial took place on October 14, 1793. The prosecution called 40 witnesses. 
1940. Marie Antoinette was found guilty of treason and sentenced to death on October 15, 1793. The following day, October 16, she was executed by guillotine. On October 16, same year, the guards arrived at her cell early, cut her hair and shackled her hands behind her back. They drove her through the streets of Paris for an hour until they arrived at the Revolutionary Square, the location of the guillotine. Guillotine is uh, something you already heard, you already saw. It's a big wooden device. It's a tall with the blade is on the top and just by gravity and weight, it cuts your head because of the place your hair, because you place your, your body and the, the blade actually cut your hair, separate your head from the body. That's the guillotine. It's very simplified way of dying, instant death. Take in consideration that Marie Antoinette in prison was given different name and she's a prisoner on number 280 and they cut her hair and uh, shackled her hands behind her back. It speaks the volume. They were still afraid of her and they tried to humiliate her as well. They drove her through the streets of Paris for an hour until they arrived at that revolution square. There's a record of what's happened that day. Now is the moment, madame, to arm yourself with courage. The priest who was with her murmured in hushed tones as she climbed out of the car and observed the guillotine. Courage! Marie Antoinette chuckled as she turned to face him. My fearlessness will not abandon me when my problems are resolved. According to folklore, her final words were, excuse me, sir, as she stumbled over the executioner foot. Marie Antoinette was executed by guillotine at 12.15 p.m. Let's go make a conclusion here. As a result of one of history's most misunderstood ladies died at the hands of the guillotine having nothing. She was left without her family, her children, who she loves so much, contaminated by her husband's lies and incompetence because her husband was incompetent. We did, not, we did not begin to perceive her life from the perspective of a young lady entering a norm whose life was governed by men whose incompetence eventually led to her death until many years later. She is the only one example of how difficult it was to be a woman in a world controlled by males, even in the best conditions. Marie Antoinette, she never said, let them eat cake. However, those words inspire the mob for revolution. Feel free to subscribe, share, like, comment by leaving comments in the comment section below. We can learn from each other much more better. Thank you.